So when we want to graph rational functions, if we can't automatically see the shifts, we have some other strategies. So let's talk about what those might be. One of the first things I like to do is take a look at my asymptotes. So vertical asymptotes occur when my denominator equals zero. So to find the equation of my vertical asymptotes, I just grab the denominator, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. It gives me the equation of a line, x equals, and it tells me where my vertical asymptote is. So I'm going to go to where x is negative 5, and I'm going to dot in a vertical asymptote. Okay. Now, x, exactly right, x can never actually equal negative 5. It can just get really close to it. And the closer it gets to negative 5, the larger my function values are going to be because I'll be dividing by a super small number here. Okay. So I have my vertical asymptote, something to go off of. Now I want to talk about my horizontal asymptote. So this is my vertical asymptote discussion. Horizontal asymptotes. There are a couple of ways you can do it. Here's what I want to show you. I'm going to take the highest power of x in my denominator, which is x to the first, and I'm going to divide the top and the bottom both by, one over, by x, multiply by 1 over x. So I'm going to rewrite my function as 3x over x, so each term gets divided by x. Okay. And in the denominator, I'll have this x that I started with divided by the x that's coming through, plus that 5 that's there divided by the x that's coming through, okay. our horizontal asymptote discussion. We're multiplying top and bottom by 1 over x. Same thing as dividing top and bottom by x. Okay. And your horizontal asymptote is a discussion about what happens as x gets big. Okay, so horizontal asymptote, what does my function look like for really big x's, right, as we head out in either direction here. Okay. So in my fractions here, right, the 3x over x, I can cancel those guys. I can cancel these two x's, that makes a 1. So my function, right, an alternate way to write the function would be 3 minus 6 over x over 1 plus 5 over x. So now if we talk about when x gets big, okay, when x gets big out here, these terms that still have an x in the denominator, those get really, really small. And in fact, they go to 0. They never equal 0, but they get close enough so that my function, my function values, my y values, will start to behave like this, 3 over 1. That is how I find my horizontal asymptote. It's one way to find it. You guys might know a different way, and that's fine. But since we're getting ready for our calculus class, this is what we're going to talk about. OK, let's see. What else could we figure out? Um, how about a y-intercept set x equal to 0? Looks like that's at negative 1 something. Uh, X-intercept, we set the numerator equal to 0. That's the only thing that can help. 3x minus 6 equals 0. That means x must be 2. And I'm going to draw it. So with my asymptotes, that's the part, right? Those are the lines. My graph is going to get closer and closer to. So I'm going to hit my intercepts and then come up and right sneak up on my asymptotes and then kitty corner. And I don't know exactly where it lives. And if I wanted to, if I wasn't so lazy, I could go ahead and plot a few points out here for those x's smaller than negative 5. But I'm just going to sketch it in for now. And we're going to do one more example. OK, here we go. Uh, so g of x equals x plus 2 over x squared minus x minus 12. So how would we go about sketching this function? Okay. So vertical asymptotes, we set that denominator equal to 0. Solve for x. And you can use a formula. You can use factoring. 
choose whatever it is you want. It looks like I will have vertical asymptotes at x equals 4 and x equals negative 3. Okay, oops, looks like I'm shy one of my axes there. So grab yellow and we'll dot in our asymptotes. One, two, three, four. And negative three, two, three. Okay. And now we're going to talk about our horizontal asymptote. So we'll do the same thing we did above. We're going to divide everybody by the highest power of x in the denominator, x squared. So every single term gets divided by x squared. I'm kind of going to run out of room here, so I'm going to scrunch it up right there. Here's my little workspace. So I'll have x over x squared plus 2 over x squared over x squared over x squared minus x over x squared minus 12 over x squared. Simplify each of your fractions. That does 1 over x plus 2 over x squared over 1 minus 1 over x minus 12 over x squared. Oh, there it is. Okay. And we're letting x get very big. So as x gets very big, every term that still has an x in the denominator goes to 0. So there's a 0, there's a 0, there's a 0, and there's a 0. And all I'm left with, oh, I've got nothing in the numerator. I've got a 0 over a 1. Okay, 0 over 1 equals 0. So as x gets big, my g values, my y values, start be looking like 0, which is your x-axis. Now, it's only true right out here for big x's, not in here in the middle. Weird things are going to happen in the middle. But on the outside, that's what's going to happen. OK, let's see. Any intercepts in there we could look at? Okay, hold on, I'll write it. Y, or horizontal asymptote is um, the x-axis. Y equals 0. So intercepts, back to intercepts. Um, let's see, x-intercept, 0, negative 2. Or negative 2, 0, you're right, negative 2, 0. Y-intercept, cover up all your x's, they're all 0. Uh, negative 1 6 Note, make a note. When I looked for my x-intercepts, they can only happen when the numerator is 0. And I just found that value. There aren't any more places I can cross the x-axis. I found the only place that will make this function equal to 0. I can't swoop around and come back. So we're going to go up. And it might do other whoop de woos in there. I'm not sure. But that's what we have so far. And now, let's see what we want to do. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at what happens in those regions. We're going to have a little calculus discussion. You ready? So I'm going to write my g of x down here, and I'm going to write it factored. And we're just going to discuss what the signs of each of these factors is in our different locations. Okay? So follow me right here. So let's talk about over here when x is bigger than 4. Right, so here's where my x equals 4 asymptote was. So when I'm bigger than 4, out here at 5, for instance, or 4.1 even. So at 4.1, I've got 6.1 positive in the top. 4.1. I've got a positive small number right here. And 4.1, I've got a positive number right there. Okay, so to the right of 4, everybody's positive, and I have this really small number in the denominator. Okay, so really small numbers in the denominator mean I have really big numbers that come out. Right? My outputs are really big numbers. So that's a positive infinity. Okay? And then we head that way. Remember, I can't cross my x-axis anymore. And I have to hit my, or come close to my horizontal asymptote, something like that. And then I'm going to go over and let's take a look at to the left of negative 3. Okay, so something like negative 3.1. Okay, so negative 3.1 plus 2. Okay, negative 3 wins, so I've got negative in the top. Better make a chart. Negatives, I have to make a chart. So negative for my top. 
negative 3.1 minus 4, that one's negative as well, negative 3.1 plus 3. The negative, right, has a bigger absolute value. It's further to the left. So it wins. This plus 3 pulls it back a little, but not enough. So I have a very small negative factor for that third one. So three negatives are negative, and right, so I have a negative result. This factor right here is really, really small, so I'm dividing by really, really small. That means my answer is really, really big, but really big negative. That's down here. And then up and hit that horizontal asymptote. So you can do a little analysis and come up with a, a rough sketch for your rational functions.